Okay, okay. Good afternoon all. Welcome Dr. Madangi. Madam, I am... Uh, good, af good afternoon, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Dr. Sangeeta is here. Uh, she is closely associated with us and uh, she is an expert in... Uh, um, yeah. Dr. Sangeeta, I am happy to introduce Dr. Madangi to the platform here. Uh, she is the head of the uh, Ramachandra Medical College unit of mind-body medicine. So an official, unofficially, I'm introducing you to her. Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome you all to the second day of the faculty development program. We will start with a short prayer and I request the students of School of Music Therapy to lead us in prayer. Thank you, dear students, for that aesthetic welcome. And on behalf of the School of Music Therapy, I am really very happy to welcome you all to the second day of the faculty development program in the understanding of music therapy in educational and clinical settings. We had a wonderful session on day one by Dr. Karuna on the Indian perspectives of music therapy. And today is the second day and uh, uh, thanks for all the participants for having logging in in time. Now, on this uh, great day, we have with us here, Dr. Madangi, who would give the first session. Yes. Um, so to the audience, I take the privilege to introduce Professor Madangi here who's, um, I am very happy additionally because she is a very good friend of us. Um, Dr. Madangi is presently the professor and head of the Department of Mind-Body Medicine and Lifestyle Sciences, Sri Ramachandra Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Chennai. Uh, Madam is basically a medical physiologist who had done her doctorate and MSc in medical physiology um, her qualifications are amazing. She has done hospital administration, postgraduate diploma in bioinformatics, and also a certificate course in exercise and sports physiology. More than anything else, Madam is a certified life coach. And she has got more than 25 years of teaching and research experience. And uh, her uh, interest has been uh, recognized by trade platforms as she is a recipient of the Young Scientist Award at national level. She has got the Best Scientist Award from the Western Australian University and also the award from the Harvard for having leadership for academic training program. And uh, she has delivered more than 170 talks. She has a patent for her credit. And uh, her interest in research are stretch, uh, I'm sorry, stress and sleep. And she has got a lot of funded projects which are funded by very highly reputed bodies like the ICMR and DST, which shows her level of research. Uh, Dr. Madangi has more than 58 research publications with very good citation. And, uh, she, uh, and a hedge index. She is a reviewer of high impact journals and uh, she had co-authored the book Ross and Wilson's Applied Anatomy and Physiology. 
more than anything else when we talk with madam the amount of positivity which radiates from her is amazing she is a motivational and a personality she has conducted motivational and personality development sessions for students for corporate for management work life balance women empowerment mindfulness learning and memory and so on uh, and i had myself seen personally how much she has got involved in developing the mind body medicine and lifestyle uh, life sciences unit in the institution uh, the dedication of the of the students to the department and madams in uh, reciprocation was amazing because i had a, a chance to interact with them um, so we are very happy uh, dr madangi madam to have you here and uh, now the session is yours so now madam will be talking to us about a uh, overview and the role of basic understanding and the role of music therapy in uh, management of stress so let us all welcome her thank you thank you, thank you so much for that kind introduction i i need to appreciate dr shobhana and her team it's hardly one month that we both spoke about can we do something jointly i think this was the fastest collaborative initiative if i can say that she made things happen really really very quick really appreciate that positivity with which you have initiated it and thanks for the opportunity to be a part of this program on both i'm a participant and i'm also a resource person i wish to learn in this session as well that's why i've registered as a participant too okay thank, thank you, you so you. much um i wish to also appreciate balaji vidyapeet you were spot on to start a program on time everybody keeps calling indian stretchable time you really made it like we are exact on the spot dot 2 o'clock you started the program really really appreciate that um, now can i have your permission to share my slides please madam please yeah, thank you i i hope to make the session interactive so please feel free to interrupt me or however it is to the organizer if there is anything on the chat or if they unmute please tell me to pause so that like i don't make it a monotony of a lecture thank you just give me a quick check if you are able to see my slide on a slide show mode is it on a slide show mode now thank you thanks for that acknowledgement okay i just thought like i will take walk you through in this uh probably i'm just taking like pro max as a 40 minute not more than that hopefully i don't overshoot my time i put my timer also on right next to me not to overshoot um i'm basically a physiologist but love music like anything whether others like my music or not i love music okay so enjoy it and it is greetings from sri ramchandra institute of higher education and research and personally from my department mind body medicine and lifestyle sciences how i have planned the session is a little bit because i understand like we have mixed audience here a little bit on stress which might look basic for some people who are already on the medical side what is the impact of stress and how we can manage stress in that i'm going to draw only one which will be music i'm walking you through from general to evidence based research and how can we take this in a way forward manner okay i'm sure all of us know this a stress can either make us or break us right so now what do i do when i am not pushed i'm actually having a bored life but i'm pushed beyond my comfort zone that's when probably i really give my best my optimum is reach but if you keep pushing me pushing me not nudging me but if you keep pushing me i can break that is the high stress this is the part that we all need to be which is a stress but it is a good stress we call it as optimum stress where my performance is good i am happy in the space where i want to be as well and it is an amazing my best comes out but the downside of it is when i am not able to cope up with it all of us call stress as perceived inability to cope right from 
down to up i think i can definitely cope up right i'm able to handle it but the minute i can't handle it it's a downside for me right so what happens to me when i'm stressed out <coughs> my body my mind my emotion and my behavior all of it gets stressed out each one shows okay <coughs> i'm going to keep i i will keep sharing and stop sharing as i go okay so that i can actually see what you are typing for me when you are stressed tell me how does your body talk to you that tell you that you are stressed like for me when i am stressed i have a severe headache the minute i am going for that hot chocolate or that really chocolatey chocolatey things i know something is not going wrong going okay with me or something is wrong with me that's an easier way sometimes i just say at home like i don't want food what happened what was wrong at the workplace it's easy for people to know when i'm stressed out can each one of you tell me like how your body tells you that you're stressed out you can either type or you can chat i'm looking out for da, 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 a lot of things coming up so that like i'm finding it difficult to read it extra tiredness agreed oh, that i love that extra so that means always we are tired palpitation headache eat a lot and fall sick good muscle pain sleeplessness and she has eat a lot thomasic tendency oh my god <laughs> headache and eat sweets i really like it right have you seen like when you're stressed you go for something very specific you don't eat anything that is offered stressed and specificity is very much there cloudy thoughts exactly that comes always in when we are sitting for the viva spending a lot of time on social media and always think that we are very busy as well easy to snap for no reason agreed worried about the person next to us actually irritated sleepless playing guitar shrishti amazing yeah you are in the right place here you should be on this side then i eat a lot okay i should have been the other side then excellent i'm really loving it each one of you have given me a different way like how to see so that means our body is speaking to us telling that you are not okay sometimes we fail to understand when we are not okay when my body is telling you are not okay because that's the first sign for us like watch out something is not okay something is wrong correct it right can't think properly overthinking agreed amazing i really love this batch of participants right so that means can you see that i have not told anything you have told everything headache chronic illness some disability or other sore throat fatigue skin i'm some girl eight girls will have lot of dandruff hair fall and other things loss of confidence irritability anger apathy i think you have so some of it said you sleep a lot many of them don't sleep at all appetite judgment you have given me all the answer i don't even need to tell this so when we are stressed all of us know body mind emotion behavior everything is affected even before we know we are stressed people around us know that don't go to her room she's not okay now we love so many people who will put that red flags to us so that we are safe as well right so what is required now is what is happening in my body right uh, to the organizers just tell me are you able to see the title of my slide or is it getting obscured yeah you are able to see the title of my slide right yes pathophysiology of stress but fantastic okay great okay. because sometimes the uh, prompts uh, hides the slide that's why i just wanted to check so what happens is whenever i am stressed we have a beautiful sensors in human body i am at awe with god because he has made ai is now only coming but he seems to be a master of ai he has done a number of sensors in our body and each one is integrated and working so beautifully the orchestra is amazing in our body the minute i am stressed my hypothalamus tells to the body man you're stressed let me help you in handling it it tells to the next person which is the pituitary gland through a hormone called as corticotrophin releasing hormone or releasing factor which makes my pituitary 
go and tell to the adrenal cortex through another hormone called as adrenocorticotrophic hormone. This adrenal gland, especially the cortex of it, releases a hormone called as cortisol, which is the one which mobilizes all the energy for us to run. If a dog is chasing us, run, cry, scream, do everything. Have all the energy enough to run. Probably you'll be the next 100 meter Olympic best timer as well. That speed I'm able to walk. It's one limb, which is adrenal cortex. He's amazing. He doesn't believe in one. He tells to the other person, which is activates the nerves. First was the endocrine system. The next was the nervous system, especially the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system again works through the adrenal gland, but through the adrenal medulla, but by in itself as well, producing two hormones. One is epinephrine, other is norepinephrine. It's not enough I have more energy, but my heart should function well. Take the energy to the place which is required. Have good blood flow. Have availability of glucose wherever it is required. So increases the blood pressure so that the blood flow is not compromised. Every essential organ gets the blood supply. Heart fo contracts forcefully. Your heartbeat can probably even hurt outside. You don't need even a stethoscope when you're stressed out, right? You start to have a high blood sugar level as well. Have you ever seen when you're running like this, when a dog is chasing you, even if you're getting hurt, you don't even sit and cry? Right? I'm a person who cries even for a pin prick or the lancet prick when I'm doing a blood count analysis. Now I'm bruised and I'm not stopping and crying for the bruise because I don't feel the pain now. It is a life or a death or cry for the small pain. How is it happening? I have a lot of beta endorphin which are produced, which is an analgesic. Can you see how beautifully my body has adapted to stress? This was described by Hansele and called as the general adaptation syndrome or in short called as gas. So what is happening? I am stressed. My hypothalamus got stimulated. It had two limbs, one, an endocrine limb, two, a, a nervous limb. So that's why you call it as neuroendocrine mechanism of handling your stress through cortisol, through endorphin, through norepinephrine and epinephrine. Can you see how beautifully it is helping us handle the stress? That's amazing. That's for one time. But if it's going to happen repeatedly and I'm not developing my coping strategy, it becomes worse. Always my heart rate is high. My blood is vasoconstricted always. I become a hypertensive. I can have a cardiac block. My blood sugar level is always high. I can become a diabetic, right? All problems are happening if I don't address my stress. I don't learn to cope up with my stress, right? This axis, endocrine axis, is what we call it as hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis, otherwise called as HPA axis, right? So beautiful orchestra of our body in this general adaptation syndrome is inherently happening in our body. You don't need to do anything. It is automatic. It does by itself to help you cope up with the stress. But if the stress is more than this, that's where you need to work on. Because if it is more than what you can cope up, there is my mental status my physical efficiency, my emotional energy, I feel drained out. Tell me, how many of you in a day, you come in with 100% positivity. By midday itself, I'm half done. By the end of the day, I am dead. That means something is not okay. This is what we call as burnout. Starting is stress. When it is a good stress, we call it as a you stress. When the stress is doing havoc in me, I call it as a distress. I'm not addressing the distress. I've gone to the worst part, which is the burnout. What happens when I get burnout? I feel exhausted. Monday morning itself, I feel exhausted. I feel I'm always cynical. I always feel, what's the use? Nothing is going to happen. That futility, no use. I'm not going to get promoted. I'm not going to get recognized, sort of a thing. Then what do we do finally? 
we avoid. We either don't want to be in the center of the eye. We don't want to volunteer for anything. It's okay. You give it to him. Passing the, uh, all the things to others or even taking leave, right? Any of these things, if you see in yourself, please, 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 you need help. You need assistance. You need guidance to handle yourself, right? First, it was the neck pain, headache, or going for chocolates. Or go, you said so many things, right? If you're not able to handle it, you will end up in this. Let us, none of us end up in this because from here only you go into other wrong things that are happening, right? Apart from what I'm having, all diseases, I might take even wrong decisions in life. We see even in IIT, the, we call the most IQ, have the lowest EQ as well. With suicide in one IIT or other happening, right? Young kids all so much of loaded with so much of energy and uh, intelligence, try to get admission and within half a year end their life. For what was it happening? Are we identifying as teachers in them, as parents of them, or as even friends of them in any of these signs? I think the somewhere we neither see ourselves or see people around us to say that they are stressed. They are stressed, but they are happy. They are distressed. They've reached the burnout. Each one is a cry for help. It needs to be addressed. So how do you address it? Four A's. Simplest way, avoid the stressor. Alter the way you handle the stressor. Perfect communication, beautiful communication, time management, learning to say a no. Okay, alter the way you are doing things. Or sometimes accept, this is all I can do. I can't be, uh, I can't speak the way so-and-so uh, speaks. This is all I can. Accept or I need to do it. I don't know how, but let me upskill myself and do it. That is adapting to that environment, to the stressful situation, right? Can we try this? Avoid, alter, accept or adapt. None of it are working for me. What do I do? Right? Each one of us would have tried any of these things. Right? Even I'll put one more yay, asking for help. Right? We would have tried all these things. Nothing has worked. So how do I self-handle myself or by seeking support? E number of ways to de-stress are there. Right? from our mind-body medicine. I wish to take those things we call as the mind-body medicine techniques to de-stress. I know all of us keep agarbati when we are praying, aromatherapy, practicing visualization, doing yoga, just walking, being with the nature, listening to soothing music. All our breathing techniques, journaling. Sometimes I'm angry with somebody. I write everything. By the end of the time I'm writing it, my anger goes off. Art. Going for even a simple hot oil massage or the kaya kalpa or anything that we go in Ayurveda. Meditating. Really watching nice stand-up comedy. Healthy. Okay? Not double meaning. Helps us. Reading good book. Just be under the shower. Cry under the shower. Do anything. Or laugh out loud. Or just have that coffee, listening to your wonderful music, watching the nature. What else do we want? We get de-stressed beautifully. But be mindful with whatever therapy that you're trying to do. But for this session, I wish to focus on only one thing, music. Somewhere down, I always feel music is something that we have been listening to, living with right from the time we were in our mother's womb. Probably it is the best wonder drug which helps us to calm us, to motivate us, to cheer us up, to make us put to sleep, everything to fall in love as well. We have one genre or other to take us there, right? I put all the names which I could put on Crowded slide. I'm not going to read anything. It's only to say that every person whom we have seen looked up to them. Even for them, music has been their go-to. Right?
can any of you tell me when is the day for music therapy i hope i have something to someone is typing something when is the world music therapy day i'm not getting anybody typing surprising i got one let me see the answer it's world music therapy week now fantastic okay uh watch it's a march 1st is considered as world music therapy day we are right in the space now these are three songs which i really really love i am sure you know who wrote my three bajata a benediction written by a revered jain uh, chandrashekhar saraswati so, or, or i think our ultimate guru for most of us who wrote it when whether you know the his sanskrit word or read the english meaning at this juncture in the world even now this seems to be a song like which i probably i think like the best song which could be sung world over right or tell me the any time you listen to a a mere vatan ke logo it's not just because each song has made us feel something compassionate feeling one with them or energized so much of music can do to us no denial if india came together for the freedom struggle it was music music brought us together as one country we fought together we had a music which brought people to any talk or anything be it mahatma gandhi ji or patel or anybody there was a song which was only bringing everybody together so it played such an important role in our indian history in itself so if i'm going to say not only freedom music can help us in mental thing to improve our focus to lift our mood a best form of expression even if i want to talk i am sure i all of us will remember the song from guna right abirami abirami he writes a letter and she sings it as a song amazing way of expression right to boost our confidence to relax or to express our negative emotions as well right these are all something that all of us have experienced being a physiologist i definitely don't want to leave it with this requesting the participants to please wait for a few minutes um i'm sorry i think i got disconnected 
Thanks. I think one of the organizer had called me now, I suppose. Thank you. Uh, please do in case I get disconnected again, please feel free to call me again. Okay, so now this elephant became the most favorite of the king. And even though he became old, they kept him in the animal place stay itself. But one day, this elephant, everybody was so scared, like the king was going to kill them if this elephant dies of drowning in that swamp. So they tried all means to come, make him come out. They could not, he was just sinking in. At that time, they said that let at least the king have the last vision of the face of the elephant. And they called the king. King was literally on his knee in front of the elephant because he had been taking him all through, never ever let the king down in any war field. But today, he's helpless. That side, a monk went that side. He just said, can you bring the war drums? People there were so curious. Why is this monk telling it? Start to beat it. When they started to beat it, slowly and steadily, the elephant, which was sinking in, started to stand on its foreleg, started to keep moving, came out of that swamp very happily. Right? Sometimes it's a music which brings us back to who we are. Okay, so it does so much even for an animal and no doubt what it can do for all of us, right? How is that possible? We all know our thought becomes our emotion. Whenever we are emotionally affected, it's our limbic system and our hypothalamus which gets connected. The minute they are getting triggered, no doubt about it, it's our pituitary gland, all our endocrine gland, all our hormones and neurochemicals and our behavior gets changed. Is music somewhere connected to it? That's when you have to ask the five A's. Ask. Ask a very good question. Right? Track down the best evidence to answer your question. Whatever result that you have got, critically appraise the evidence for validity, impact, and its application. Once you do it, integrate the evidence into the clinical decision making. Apply it into the patient, into your clinical setup. Again, audit. Is it working? Did I ask the right question? Keep spiraling. This is what we call as evidence-based medicine or evidence-based practice, right? We are there now. Everybody knows music works, but are we having enough scientific evidence? That's where we are little falling short of, right? We know if we hear music, we sing music. Is there a difference? Definitely. When we hear music, it stimulates a nervous system and improves the specific bodily function. Even my the depending on the raga that I like, I start to have the different wave patterns there. But when I sing, it stimulates the whole brain. Much better than when I hear the music, right? So which music am I talking about? Each one is different. But let's see what it does. What's the physiology behind it? When I listen to music, what are the three things that comes when you listen to a music? Number one, the sound. Number two, you start to listen to the words. You start to understand to the words. And your emotion, what comes when you listen to Mere Vatan Ke Logo? If you understand Hindi and you can understand the meaning of the Hindi and the emotion with which Lataji sings that song, any number of time you have listened to it, you will cry, right? So it's the physical, mental, and emotionally we get connected. How? We have the hormones and the neurochemicals which are getting released. What are they? Number one. I start to have cortisol produced from the HPA axis. My stress gets relieved. I start to have dopamine released from the striatum. I feel like rewarded, so happy about it. Oxytocin gets that motherly instinct comes. I start to exuberate love. Some music when I listen, I feel calm and I go to sleep, right? Now, all this feeling we have when we listen to music, 
stress get relieved feeling so happy feeling so emotionally connected feeling sleepy now do we know the chemicals involved in that that's the physiology behind music and the impact that we see then every region of the brain does something my right and left hemispheres are connected we know my i am a right dominant person it's my left brain which is helping me with all the motor thing but the creative brain is the right but both of them are connected can you see that nowadays kids listen to music and study i used to say that what does your brain think it will listen to the words that be that the artist is singing or it will it listen to the words that you are reading right they say no both the brains are connected they work harmoniously you are only bringing disharmony you keep quiet your voice is bringing the disharmony corpus callosum is the connection between the right and the left the creative brain works like anything when you listen to music and draw something your drawing is amazing how is that possible my motor cortex the dancing or music it starts to work my prefrontal cortex which is in my decision making you are upset listen to a music before you want to say something listen to the music calm yourself pep up yourself go to the meeting you will give your best right or oh, my sensory cortex when i listen to the music that feel of the instrument i am playing you can see abdul kalam ji playing veena he actually plays beautiful veena he used to play beautiful veena as well for him he used to say that somewhere i don't get a solution i go and play the veena i get a beautiful answer for my problems as well your auditory cortex the temporal cortex when it is listening to music it analyzes so many things not just the music that it listening my, my visual cortex you can see autistic children they say that i can see the words dancing i can see the words the more creative than anybody any of us that's the visual cortex that does i listen to music i emote all the emotion because my hippocampus is getting involved right i'll i'll come to that later because i might be having alzheimers i don't even know who my son or daughter is but when you play the music that i love i can sing the next lines that amount of alzheimers can get reversed with music it has been used your nucleus accumbens and amygdala which are involved in our emotion music is what is there and our cerebellum amazing first time when i play a keyboard or a veena or any i might find very difficult sa ri ga ma like that the minute i start to learn i mastered my fingers dance on the keyboard and it is no sa ri ga ma it is the music it's the words that come out right who is doing it it's my cerebellum which is doing it not my motor cortex that beautiful thing every part of my brain is in action what more do we need to say healthy young active alert just by music it does it's the magic pill for anything sober sleepy you want to pep up you want to be creative it's go to don't go for alcohol to become creative listen to music don't go for some drugs to get sleepy listen to music to pep up listen to music right so music reduces stress good quality of sleep improves your memory helps me manage pain boost emotion less symptoms of depression ask the clinician why in every doctor's weight area they have started to put music calms the patient they have started to use music in ivf they have started to use music even for them when they are doing a surgery so that they are more focused with that ipods coming airpods they are there they start to be more focused no stress and they start to do it also there even the patient the music is there reduces the pain depression music right so can i make music can i listen to music can i write music can i talk about the lyrics of the music each one does a wonder right now it is up to you to know what you want to do take the choice of what you want to do i will definitely not go into this but you have music as medicine or music as therapy or music as intervention we have others so each one has a different physiological impact on your body 
to make a pathophysiology into a homeostasis. So that means when I listen to music, when I perform music, I'm involving the higher cortex. We saw last time when I put the brain, it is so much of processing that happens when I'm going to play my veena. Attention, working memory, recall, executive function, everything becomes well. All these hormones go up. All of them are for positivity. I keep doing it regularly. Neuroplasticity comes. Or I use music as therapy. My sensory motor function starts to come up. You have seen how we with music, I will go with art music or art, you can make I show my anger to somebody. Don't do that right? If you're not okay, please shut yourself, listen to a music and then go forward. Improves your motor skill, improves your cognitive domain. So what am I having? Know what you want to address and then have a targeted delivery so that music is right. Customize it to what is required. How? I'm just taking one example. I am stressed out. My doctor says my music therapy say, why don't you dust your piano and start to play? What happens the minute I dust my piano? My vision. I start to get involved key, seeing my keyboard. I start to hear, listen to my auditory cortex. My auditory cortex start to function. I start to use my hands really well. All my 10 fingers are listening to me now. And my time, my keeping time, my say keeping time, we need our housekeeping time for my body also, does it? The minute I know this far a big piano, double layered piano, we have three layered and one also with my leg, spatial coordination is amazing. What is multitasking? We say people are multitasking. A music person is more multitasking than anybody else, but spatial as well, right? One instrument, myriad of facility, physiology becomes working. What music does to my brain now? Can we sum it up? Healing power, incredible memory, right? It creative boost. It has a Mozart effect. I'm not going to say Mozart music alone or Beethoven's music alone puts us on, on foot, but each one of us can have our own go-to playlist, which we can use. I'm sad, I'm upset, I'm sleepy, I want to pep up, I want to motivate. Have your own play to list, right? Have a baby, even babies, they've shown that you play a music to a baby, it will start to have a crying face, a smiling face, a curious face, all emotions you can see on the face, just by a baby. He's listening to the music for the first time, but they can distinguish about each beat and the emotion that it comes. It forces the brain to pay attention and the other things as well. Right. So have I put all the physiology here together? Now, can you have your own playlist, a royal playlist to pep you up for a teamwork? Okay. Like we, you can see that army people, when they go up, we shall overcome, we shall overcome. They keep singing and climbing the mountain, right? Teamwork, love and compassion, fun and merry, calmness, soothing, have your own playlist. I'm sure all of us need all these things in a week time for some day or other. Have your playlist and go to it. I'm just going to share with you one playlist that I have created for with our team. We created it. I'm just sharing that with you. Um, let me open it and then share it with you. Yeah. Okay, I'm sharing that. This is a go-to play playlist which we did for our team. Can you see it? Royal Monarch. Can you see this? I just make it a little bigger. Oh my God, it went into the music. I'm not going to play that now. <laughs> because this is our hyperlink that we created for ourselves with a playlist. So that like, can we have each one of it Royal Monarch? For soldiers music? 
So it goes on like this. Each, each one is some music for love, compassion. Kuch na kaho. I think that 1940 love story, I think it brings in so much of love and emotion in it. Okay. Like this, have your own playlist. We have made it only as a hyperlink. Right? So have your playlist. You can make your own playlist for your team or yourself. Okay. Spirituality. Sometimes um, the Kanda Sashti Kavacham by the Sulamangalam sisters, I think, brings in that fervor like anything, like, or the Bajago Vindam of MS, each one, or the Suprabadam of MS wakes anybody who is sleeping, right? So each music does something to us. Have your own playlist like that, and I'm sure it's going to do amazing things to each one of us like this. So that means your favorite music to relax, to focus or act. So what is happening to my brain if I'm going to study physiology of my EEG at that time? I can see the music that relaxes me, I start to have delta wave. Music that makes me focus, I start to have alpha wave. Music that makes me really active, energetic, it's the beta wave. That's what they say. Your music does amazing thing to your brain. Music has been shown to reduce a cortisol level as well, which is the key marker of stress. Music has been shown to modify the autonomic nervous system. One test for autonomic nervous system, all physiologists do is heart rate variability. And everybody who goes on a long drive from Chennai to Pondicherry, we go with loaded with music, which keeps us nice on the way as well, right? Even every driver wants it. I love with Carnatic music when I'm driving on long distance. But when I put that music, when a driver is doing, a cab driver is doing, Amma, please don't that put that music. It puts me to sleep. For him, he wants a danga daga, danga daga. But for me, I want Maharajapuram Santanam songs. So each one has a different playlist, which makes his autonomic function to the best, right? We need that calmness. Less accidents on the road. Please have your playlist when you're driving. So for autonomic dysfunction to autonomic function, as early as 1884, James said that one best way to tweak your autonomic nervous system is music, right? The beat, the tempo, the pitch, it triggers neurophysiology, neuropsychology, your emotions, your behavior. Why can't we hack our brain with music? Yes, it could be done. Every music does something. A low pitch, sadness, a very high pitch, anxiety, too high pitch, a rage and a fear as well. Every genre of music triggers a different emotion. So what we now need is an integrative medicine system where we bring in the sound energy to healing. Right? I think we had it earlier in Sama Vedam or the Gandharva Vedam. Each one and in fact, we had the Sangeeta Ratnakara and other things as well, where we did have it in our Indian system, where we were using music in medicine. Somewhere down, we lost it. Can we have a framework now to integrate music with our treatment and study more physiology of it in this evidence-based manner? Can music repair my brain damage? Yes. A musician has all these things, hearing skill. A musician, the way he puts the thalam, beat jampa thalam or, uh, or the beat of two, beat of four, beat of three, anything that he does, amazing in mathematics, right? The analytical skill is awesome. Creativity, spontane spontaneity, you can see there. They talk, you can see how beautiful when they are doing jugalbandi. They are, they are connect beautifully, right? So every feeling has a brainwave trigger. They have gone one step more. This doctor turned brainwave into music. Can you see how people think differently? How to, we are thinking when I listen to music, this is the brainwave comes. And he said that if I want this brainwave, can I make the brainwave into music? He did that. And he said, a beta brainwave, the three hours of it, he has made it. If I want to concentrate. And alpha if I want to be either creative or relaxed. 
a theta if i want to go in for meditation a delta if i want to go to deep sleep he converted eeg into music and hacked the brain amazing brilliant i think i think we need to go there soon so we can music has we say that when we want to do research we need multiple things to tweak music has scale tune voice number of things the genre the instrument or the language tweak each one and you can see each one customize it for every physiology that you want to happen in you music and health music and mind is what something is there for everybody so the way forward is we music enthusiasts we as music researchers we as clinicians need to come together we can't say that it does good for me without trumpeting we have to bring it with scientific evidence that's why i asked put that 5a as evidence based practice and what we find we have to if we have done that perfectly we have to see to it that we publish in the high impact journal and bring health and well being through music i think that's what is required now so many books have started to come one way of bringing music to the forefront the next one should be capacity building i love the name that you have for your department the institute of salutogenesis when you're going to bring in for a holistic wellness what better name could be happen i love my department name mind body medicine and lifestyle sciences i think this is the way forward we need to have salutogenesis bring mind body medicine and lifestyle towards holistic well being if your department is doing workshop so many certificate programs and other things we from our side doing our small part with the msc program on mind body and lifestyle sciences i am taking this platform to project about it is because we this is the platform where i need to say like if you are interested you have these two institution which could help you be a part of this change movement where we want to make our indian system of medicine which we had bring it to the scientific forum with evidence based medicine we have a wide range of eligibility and teach you multiple things but the best part is we use art in wellness and this program we is also certified by the international body of certified coaches alliance so that you become a good health and wellness coach who is able to integrate the mind body technique the lifestyle medicine or lifestyle modifications towards a holistic wellness so that's the reason why we want you to collaborate with you as well so that what is the end of it what we are looking out for bring music towards a holistic well being right so that we are going to have a swastha bharat a swachh bharat or whatever you think we can call it in the best way so that we have a healthy india where there is a harmony between the mind body and spirit thank you thank you so much and stop sharing if be happy to share and so for any questions if i can try so much ma'am for that wonderful presentation it was amazing to see how uh, such complicated things can be put in simple words in such a compact session thank you so much thank you. forum is open for discussion you can uh, request to unmute and ask your questions thank you for those kind feedback that you're giving on the chat i would appreciate if i can have some questions hello ma'am yes sir uh, am i audible very much uh, uh, thank you for the wonderful session it was uh, especially the few points we have mentioned that mindfulness and uh, the special mention about listening to music as well as uh, singing music uh thank you for these uh, wonderful points my question is about uh, the connection between nlp and uh, music and how this conditioning is used in uh, your uh, sessions there in your hospital 
So thank you very much. Sir, we are yet to use this as a therapy in our hospital. Ah, but okay. how I can I can only say is what I have read from articles or the scientific hmm. published articles where they say, um, I listen to music for music. But when I'm upset, I listen hmm. to the music for the words, the meaning in the words and the emotion with which that words is stretched. Right. So that Excellent. makes it amazing for me to transform me the way I'm thinking now. Right? That's how uh, NLP is linked with music. Okay. Uh, can I ask one more, which please is connected sir. to this? Please, uh, this is, uh, I feel this is very subjective. Uh, like if I'm upset, I don't listen to music. I'm a musician and I sing, I do concerts also. But when I'm upset, I can't listen to music. I can't even sing. I just prefer uh, a, a space where no sound is there. So it can be very uh, subjective too, right? Very, very, very true. I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. Hmm. For me, when I'm upset, hmm. I go to a class, take a class, I come back cheerful, <laughs> right? Great. For me, that becomes my pill to get back on my foot again. Each one, cool. that's why I said the coping methodology is different. I'm upset. It hmm. would be seen in my cooking. I'm <laughs> upset. It would be seen in my swara alapana when I'm singing. No creativity is there. I'm upset. Even my straight line would be a crooked line for an artist. Right? True. But when I'm upset, my best creativity might also come. We don't know Correct. what comes, but for Correct. definitely our emotion as subjective as it is, the creativity that comes out is equally different for each one of us. True. Thank you. Thank you. Tejasvi, ma'am, I'm really looking forward for you to ask me something or tell me something. Tejasvi ma'am and Sangeeta ma'am, you had a few faces that I saw right from the beginning. Um, what do I say? Um, I mean, it was a beautiful session. Thank you very much. A uh, lot of things, you know, especially the, the whole um, hypothalamus and hippocampus, that whole connection that is very interesting. For me, uh, what I find is that um like you said you have a playlist depending on what what activity i'm doing the music changes so yeah so in my own way i guess i use it to go so like especially when i go for walks i put on this loud like you know tan 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 music so that you know you get the rhythm to walk and you get the speed so yeah certainly i have like without uh, maybe understanding the theory of music therapy i we do implement it like uh, when I'm sad, there is a certain kind of music I listen to. When I'm happy, there is a certain kind of music I listen to. Even like, you know, what you were saying, watching movies, you know, I find the best way to, you know, de-stress is watching some silly slapstick comedy movie and that helps. So, uh, yeah, it was a lot of new concepts and just kind of reinforces what you already did know. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Very much. I I uh, I like the way you said. Like you go with the dun dun dance kind of a thing when you go for a walk. When yeah. I go for a walk, I have again oh. Maharaja Puram Santanam oh. sir's concert. My son used Sorry. to say Maharaja Puram Santanam sir's concert. <laughs> My son used to say, "With this, you can sleep. With this, how yeah. do you walk?" I um, used to say that there is thalam in it, which makes me walk. Right, my rhythm yeah. of walking is amazing when I when I listen to it. But when I listen to yours, your Dapankutu song, I'm not getting to walk. I'm feeling like standing off. Yeah. Like each yeah, one of us have a different uh, each one of music. Our playlists are different. Yes, our playlists are different. Great. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Namaskar, madam. It was wonderful, wonderful section. When you are expressing that with the Rasanubhava, it's really taking that even 
if people don't want to sing they will want to sing they will want to learn that's what you made actually the section of course our uh, head of the department i mean uh, shobra ma'am she like to uh, sing and uh, listen and uh, make the people to dance and she, she cheer up actually uh, always so i had the great chance to be with her and uh, we had made that journey even just singing all the way going singing and enjoying so that all the doctors they were <laughs> out of the, the usual co common normal situation they really enjoyed and so that way the way you say even it's like you want to dance we want to sing that's what actually you made and of course uh, so so nice and of course i heard that the instrumental music i mean when they are playing the instrumental or singing whether you <laughs> feel any difference that uh, when they are singing with the words that emotions gives so whether when they are i mean playing only with the instrumental whether there is a chance for the people any difference or it will be same you think ma'am yes. uh, ma'am very beautiful question i play veena when i play veena with the swara the music that comes out is very different and the feel that comes out to me is different but when i start to at least mentally start to sing the song and play it i start to have the feel of the song the words i should know the meaning actually right and like let's take madhava ma mavadi when i'm going to sing that that automatically that rasa comes into the way i'm playing also and the feel is there in the way the artist is also exuberating it i'm if even i don't even need to go there for classical that music which our kindergarten teacher or lkg ukg teacher made us to stand up and sing she got all the emotions to us with every song we used to jump when you are happy and you are thank clap your hands i think we were happy and we were smiling so much comes into it i just feel like they made music beautiful for us yes ma'am so instrument is swara but with the words it brings that emotion more into it when i don't even understand the words sung for me music straight away goes into the brain to change the way that is the resonance right i don't i don't know anything in african but when i listen to that african music their words didn't play their the rhythm synchronized resonated with the my eeg rhythm and brought the same feel if i understand the word what i will get these are the fmri studies which i have said i know the meaning i don't know the meaning how does my brain react to that music that's why the uh, the music director has to give the appropriate raga and the instrument for that music so that i know the words meanings i don't know i have the same feel that has to come in that's the magic that they do probably that's why we got oscar too thank you thank you so much sir one more thing they started to ask you one more thing that uh, they started to play the instrumental or uh, just the record play they started ma'am in the hospital we have in some of the clinics especially i have seen it in when they are doing ivf or iui they have seen it works really well there are studies which have already come out which is telling that mm -hmm. because my daughter also in Yeah, I'm going through the delivery. They are, I mean, playing the Om chanting actually. Yes. So. Uh, in in fact, there is a study from Nimhans where for the because I wasn't going into music therapy, I didn't go there, ma'am. For schizophrenia patient, Om chanting is used as a therapy, and they have beautifully shown the fMRI images of the hippocampus and the amygdala, including the size of it and their firing. How much it has changed over? It's a time. we always say is those response is for pharmacopia those response is there even for music so how many weeks of music how much change that is happening it is there thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you so much uh, madam good afternoon uh, just one yes. question from my side yes sir uh, this is dr salish yeah yes uh, like with the patients with autism like uh, for training them we use hard beats uh, hard beats and for training them but for making them sleep or making them calm down what different kind of uh, criteria are there or uh, how do you go about it uh, 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 that? okay sir i had earlier given one on music therapy for some other organization that's the time when i found 
Dr. Balamurli Krishnaji and IIT Madras has come with a playlist only for autistic children for the various mood that you want them to come in. Um, they, they have brought in a myriad of ragas. They have a, the combination is the ragas, the instrument that have been used and the emotion that you want to bring in in the autistic children. It is a very thoroughly researched CD that they have brought up. Sometimes whenever it's possible, I probably share it with the organizers so that they can share it with you as well. This is one. This is listening. This is passive. But art in itself is used as a therapy for autistic and dyslexic children in different way. Just beating the drums or the tabla, making them play an instrument, be it a flute or a keyboard or any instrument, seem to have a very, very calming effect on the autistic children. Right? They have, there are studies which have come up on that also. A few studies have come up from India, but I'm already telling it is few. We need to go through that five A's and publish it in the right journal so that we tell that we Indians have done it. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Um, I have one question from Vijayendra, sir, who has been raising his hand. Probably for the want of time, probably you can put the questions to me. Organizers will send to me so that like, I keep up the time for Shobhana to start. Uh, Dr. Um, Madangi, madam, it's okay. You please, because the, uh, the uh, participants are very interested. You may answer the question. You can yes. take your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for wonderful talk. And you have beautifully told how uh, maybe the physiology with the music is fairly interesting. Mm -hmm. I just have a question, ma'am. Uh, is there any application in cancer patients, ma'am? The music therapy in cancer patients? Yes, sir. Studies? Yes, sir. There are a lot of application in cancer patients. Like, for example, one person, she's also a coach who said that you're going for your chemotherapy. You're coming out stressed always. This person was a vocalist, a, a musician herself. She just said, which is the music which you really love? Which is the raga that you really love? She said, it was Kadana Kutuhala. She said, go to your, when you're having your chemotherapy, go with that. As the drip line is going, you, do you feel the drip line going in? It is jumping and going inside along with your blood, right? Jump with it. With the Kadana Kutuhalam, you will feel like the chemotherapy session has been amazing. When my mind is ready to receive any therapy, the therapy works best. She started to complete all her sessions successfully without anything getting affected. Right? This I'm telling for a chemotherapy patient. Right? Uh, one of my master's students is actually doing a dissertation on music in breast cancer patient. Hopefully, we'll also come up with some... Uh, we have asked the five A's. We are in the second A now. The third A is being done now. We'll probably come up with, with a full circle or full spiral of it with each student going up in that line. So it does work Thank with you. chemotherapy. Any pain, it works. There is Thank one you. question I, I can see. I think Sudhi sir has already asked. Do you agree with Raga and Rasa oriented therapy? Yes, sir. You asked me about autism. In the same name of Rasa, there is a center in Chennai run by a dance choreographer who conducts programs annually with her special children, including CP children. The name in itself is Rasa. These children don't listen to any commands, but listen to the rhythm of the music and dance perfectly. In fact, she did Ramayana with the CP children. Standing ovation for those children. I'm forgetting her name. The name was itself Rasa. Her group is name is Rasa. So every, like how we feel, my brain is compromised and functioning. Still for them, it functions. Like how uh, yesterday we had World Sleep Day where they said that circadian rhythm is a rhythm even uh, for the blind. Right? 
So that means even when my brain is non-functional, it functions for certain things and one of it is music. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hello, ma'am. Can I ask one question? Yes, Dr. Rohit. Uh, first of all, ma'am, I want to just appreciate your effort and uh, whatever you explained with us. I'm very much interested in music therapy, but uh, now I'm working as an assistant professor of yoga. But uh, I want to know like, how we can develop it as a mainstream course in, like, in our system, in our education system also. And uh, how we can make it like more scientific and uh, objective because what I think uh, like music is very personal choice. Like uh, suppose if I want to suggest some raga for someone, maybe he's not uh, aware and uh, he's not into that classical music, then how it can work for every person? This is my question. Like how we can make it more objective, not subjective. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll pick one. We all know Bhupalam, the raga which wakes us up. It wakes everybody up. Irrespect, it doesn't have a subjective feeling at all. The same way, Neelambari, call it in any name, in any thing, be it Hindustani or even Western, you call it, it puts everybody to sleep. There is no subjectivity here. Right? Okay. Same way, we need to work on everything to bring in scientific. You are yes. there listening in this forum. I'm sure Dr. Shobana, being a, a medical educationist herself, a, a trained simulation person, uh, when I am designing a program, the program outcome should be so clearly defined that it is nowhere subjective alone. Agreed, subjective feel is very, very important. But can I bring in objectivity of measurement? Yes which should also be a part of the program outcome. Yes. yes right. Yes. So that means yes. when I'm teaching somebody music therapy, it yes. is not just giving it and seeing the subjective measure. I am showing it through evidence, like how I showed cortisol level, HRV, yes. Yes. like yes. that. Am I able to show? I'm saying you listen to music, your cognition will improve. Do a cognitive assessment, give music, repeat the cognitive assessment. See, is it getting improved? Give me a cognitive assessment. Put me on a headphone. Make me do the test again. Is it getting divided attention or is it making me focused attention? You are proving your hypothesis or disproving your hypothesis. But don't be biased telling that music works. Go with that null hypothesis. Music does not work. <laughs> then you will be right in answering it. We all go with it like yoga works. So we want to make yoga work and we have all the bias of selection. That is why we don't do a randomized control trial. Do a randomized control trial. Register in CTRI. Do it like that. Who is going to not take your study when they are doing a meta-analysis to say that music work or music does not work? Right? So we follow the right scientific approach to prove what we were doing earlier. I am the right modern scientific approach. Let me reword it. All our ancestors had a scientific approach. Only thing is that let us answer in the language that the current sci modern scientists believe. This is the scientific approach, the five way. Let me follow that and show that it works. That's it. I can, I can cook in my kitchen. I can cook in a kitchen, even in a contest. That is an excellent cook, right? I can teach music, show music works in my music therapy center. I can show music work inside a cardiology department. Prove that. That is what is required. In every field, my system will work. I, but I put the question that it will not work with a null hypothesis, without bias of selection, without bias in assessment, double-blinded, triple-blinded study, and RCT study I do. I've got it. For research, same way program outcome clearly defined that it has to have all these nuances that the outcome of this program should bring in into every learner of this program. That is a scientific program then. Okay. I hope I've answered your question, Dr. Rohit. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. 
Dr. Shobhana, 30 seconds continuous silence. I think we can call it. <laughs> yeah, shall we move on to the next session? If you have more questions, you are free to put it up in the chat or you can even post it in the WhatsApp group that we have created. We'll pass it on to ma'am and we'll try and to- And there in the group as well as a participant, I would be happy to answer. Yes, she will answer you then and there instantly. So you can always post your questions in the group. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, we'll move on to the next presentation. Sorry. The next session is going to be delivered by Professor Dr. Shobhana Ard. Uh, she is currently the administrative in charge of the School of Music Therapy at ISCM. She is also a professor of physiology and the deputy director of the Medical Simulation Center, MGMCRI SB. Ma'am has an MD and her PhD in physiology and also a PG diploma in music therapy along with a fellowship in medical simulation. It is noteworthy to mention that ma'am is a gold medalist in both her MD and the PGDMD studies. Dr. Shobna has been associated with the School of Music Therapy since its inception, playing the role of an adjunct faculty, and has done extensive research on the role of music therapy in student wellness as well as clinical settings. Ma'am has published 30 articles in peer-reviewed journals and holds copyright in the music therapy process, which is called NEEDS, which stands for Musically Express Emotions and Thoughts for Success. Welcome you, ma'am. The stage is yours now. Thanks a lot, Dr. Janita. Uh, can I uh, share my screen? Yes, ma'am, I've given you the permissions. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so good evening, is my um, PP uh, PowerPoint visible and am I audible clearly to you all? Yes, ma'am, it's visible and you're audible. Okay, so before I start, my uh, uh, big, big thanks to Dr. Madangi for her time. And I could see how much her words had, had come out of her soul and how much she was into the topic. And uh, being our guest, the participation from um, the delegates is the success of our program. So it was very nice. The participants were interactive with all their doubts and discussion, which shows us uh, the involvement of Dr. Madangi. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Ma Madam. So with this, um, now I have two challenges here. One is I'm left with 30 minutes and number two, after this extensive talk by um, Madam, what am I to talk? I really don't know, but let me see um, that I should do justice for what I have uh, promised. So myself, Dr. Shobna, I have chosen the topic music therapy in the perspectives of a physiologist, of a clinician and a researcher. But now, since my time is still less, I thought there is an other talk uh, exclusively by Mrs. Bonar, Boneshwari Ramesh, who has been associated with the center for a long time, had done a lot of research in the research updates of music therapy. Uh, let me curtail my talk to the physiologist and clinician perspectives. Now, before I start, um, our respects to Dr. Sumati Sundar, and our most respected Professor K.R. Seturaman sir and Ananta Krishnan sir and our adjunct faculties, our registrar, our controller of examination and the professor of psychiatry, Shiva Prakash sir, who were in the unit since its inception. You could see the key people of Sri Balaji Vidyapi were associated with the center, which shows the support from our institution in running our center. 
So we were initially the Center for Music Therapy Education and Research, and now we have become the Institute of Salatogenesis and Complementary Medicine, and we have the great support of our director, uh, Professor Ananda Balayogi, and our sisters and brothers from the Center of Yoga Therapy. So we are united and marching towards achieving salatogenesis. Now, before I start my talk, when I looked at the participants, they were of different uh, streams and they were of different specialities. Few were musically very much trained, but the therapy part is new to them. Okay. Few were uh, trained in the basic of music therapy and mind body medicine. For them, the clinical aspects and the areas where they can work is little a gap. Okay, few are psychologists and few are in the field of education. So we have four different type of people. Now I thought of myself being a physiologist and a clinician. Let me use my speciality so that I will share on especially the physiological basis and the application of music therapy and also the experiences of what we had in this one decade at Sri Balaji Vidyapeet. So my talk is planned on the basic of music therapy, uh, mind-body medicine, and the published literature. So I will walk through the basic so that we concentrate more on the areas where we work. Is that fine? Yeah. So, yes. yeah. So this is the very much basic and the PubMed databases suggest music, medicine, music therapy as mind-body intervention in order to accomplish the therapeutic or non-musical goal. Um, for people who are new to this platform, music therapy is a form of mind-body medicine. Yes. So we state that body acts on the mind by psycho that is psychophysiology and mind acts on body so all these are the basic of the mind body therapies so they induce positive emotions and reduce stress by the mind body information transfer systems now uh, beyond the cam or uh, complementary alternative therapy Music therapy is, uh, comes under the integrative medicine where we look at the solitogenesis or the overall wellness of a person, ability for self-healing and ability for uh, becoming a whole. This is the solitogenic approach. Instead of looking at the disease, we look at wellness of the person and look at a person as a whole. Before we start, I would just repeat the basic of principles of music therapy. Uh, it might be known for many of you here. It is not just listening to pre-recorded music and music which feels soothing to one person may be unpleasant to other. So it is more of subjective. And music therapy is not uh, it is not an alternative one. It is complementary to the conventional therapy. And finally, the music therapist and subject need not be musically qualified, but yet it is preferable if they are qualified. So there is a separate session on the uh, difference between music medicine and music therapy. Whereas when a therapy is active, music medicine is passive, receptive, listening. Um, as a physiologist, I would like to stress here again, though it is known to most of you, mind-body has interaction, which has an effect on the physical health of a person by few systems or by few interactions, which are called as the information transfer system or information transfer pathways. They are the autonomic nervous system, endocrine pathway on the immune system and also by health behavioral pathways. So 
auditory processing and involving in musical activities acts on hypothalamus, modulates the autonomic nervous system and the endocrine system. In the autonomic nervous system, it leads to a preponderance of parasympathetic and in the endocrine system, it also uh, establishes harmony. So by these two modulation, we get the required physiological responses. Now, as uh, Dr. Madhangi said, there are a lot of research which shows the effect of music in the brain and music evoked emotions modulate the limbic and the paralimbic areas. The fMRI and PET studies have shown that there are difference in the blood flow in the limbic and the hypothalamic areas because they stimulate the reward center and also the emotional processing happens. Now, um, a basic understanding of the effect of music, as I told, there is autonomic modulation shift to the vagal preponderance of parasympathetic, endocrine modulation, cardiorespiratory modulation, and psychological effects. Now, so with the physiological background or a physiologist perspective, I wanted to little stress on where a music therapist can work. So there are evidences to prove, yes, there are evidences to prove that music therapy is used in hospitals to alleviate pain, to elevate mood and reduce anxiety, to promote rehabilitation and to induce sleep. These are the basic in hospital setting. There are studies to prove it improves students' performance and also on special children and benefit in community setup like geriatric and transgenders. Now, for people who are new to this forum from a non-medical background, I would like to share a basic understanding of the application. A disease is a condition which is deviation from normal and you, uh, for you to have an overall idea, diseases could be infectious, because of deficiency, genetic, and psychological. I'm sorry, physiological. They could be communicable or non-communicable. So the first three areas are little less of our uh, focus. And the non-communicable diseases are where a music therapist could work. Now, to understand what is a communicable and a non-communicable disease, a non-communicable disease are a group of chronic, slow progressive diseases, whereas communicable spread from one person to another, mostly infectious. So basically a music therapist or for that matter, um, a mind-body medicine a person, can work in these areas of non-communicable chronically progressing disorders, which affects the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, in cancer patients, and also in a diabetic patient. So these are the very potential area or very successfully a music therapist could work. Yeah. I would like to little elaborate on the music therapy referral areas. This was um, developed uh, by the School of Music Therapy initially when it was uh, called as the Center for Music Therapy Education and Research. We had worked on, uh, we had worked extensively and with the input of the specialist or expert in that field, we could make an exhaustive list of where a music therapist could work. I'm happy to share to people who want. For example, if you could uh, look at um, obstetrics and gynecology, for example, we work in a person during the antenatal period for their anxiety, for which here we have a program called as Garb Sanska. They come repeatedly and they undergo the process during labor or intrapartum cooperation. So cooperation of a pregnant woman to the gynecologist or to the procedure 
can be improved by music therapy processes. So before labor in the anxiety, during labor for cooperation to the uh, gynecal obstetrician, postpartum, like after labor, a pregnant woman or a delivered woman is prone to get depression. Postpartum depression is very common. So we can work on postpartum depression. During menopause, women get depression. You can, act, you can work on that in emotionally supporting women. More so in this, this has been developed. We work on the lactation and the sad, uh, uh, of women, uh, the effect of music therapy in lactating women. And currently one of our postgraduates is doing her study on musical intervention during episiotomy. So uh, she does humming and chanting. So uh, she's getting very good feedback from the obstetrician who's doing the episiotomy procedure. So we have developed the entire list of conditions where a music therapist could work. For example, next to uh, OG, I would like to uh, stress on anesthesiology. Similarly, preoperative stress and preoperative anxiety, a music therapist could work. You can reduce the sedation level during minor procedure. A music therapist can work in post-operative pain, reducing the post-operative pain and reducing the length of hospital stay after surgery. Normalizing sterile operating procedure or so or other areas where we can work. So these are uh, the areas in dentistry, psychiatry, neurology, pulmonary medicine, anesthesia, and OG. Others are in pediatrics. So pediatrics, general surgery, cardiology, dermatology, and radiology and imaging. So you can see. In all these areas, we work before procedure to reduce the anxiety, during procedure and after the procedure. Now, um, I would just touch upon the music therapy methods. And um, last session by Dr. Karuna, there were different music therapy methods given to us. Um, they are a receptive music therapy uh, is one method, a recreative, creative, and improvisational. So just listening to preferred music is receptive. Uh, why I wanted to share it, I just wanted to give you an area where we had worked with each type of music therapy. This receptive technique we used with a, with a cohort of pre-hypertensives who listen to their uh, recorded music, their preferred music. So it is a receptive therapy. What I wanted to stress is, you are supposed to understand the different methods of music therapy and also the areas where you work and properly match the method with the population. After receptive, we have another method called as recreative. Recreation is there is a predetermined music therapy process, a pre-composed song which the music therapist sings or creates and the client also recreates it. This we used in the population of transgender and geriatric as a community project. Now we have next level of it. So basically it is receptive. The next is recreative. Creative is composing, which helps uh, the client to express themselves. And improvisational, which are all spontaneous. So the improvisational and creative music therapy was used to our student population where we aimed in reducing their uh, inhibition and improving their expression. I'll come in detail about it later. So that there are different methods in music therapy which have to be matched to our uh, non-musical goals. What you want to achieve by your session, as Dr. Madhengi said, you should be objective in what you want. So list your objective. Understand who is your population 
and match the objective with the intervention what you are planning. So just to give an example, I wanted to uh, share this. Now, this um, few slides, I would like to share as a physiologist and a clinician to people who have their uh, musical and music therapy background. Um, if you have been doing music therapy and if you want to uh, do an evidence base or if you want to uh, document or publish, you're supposed to go in a structured uh, manner. So I just wanted to give an overall idea or an overview of how a music therapy activity is planned. So before starting, um, there are different assessment we make. Since music therapy is tailored for each person, we need to assess or we need to get the musical profile, which includes the musical interest, preferences of the person. We need to do a psychological assessment in what state they are, whether they are a well-being, have a feeling of well-being, they are depressed or anxious, and you need to assess their clinical condition. So it is a triad, like a triangulation of assessment has to be done. A musical assessment, a psychological, and a clinical assessment. Now, clinical assessment is assessing non-musical outcome, which is done as a qualitative and a quantitative assessment. The qualitative assessments are done by questioners and in-depth interviews, whereas the quantitative assessments are done as the vital signs and so on. Now, people from music and music therapy background to empower themselves in a research need to be trained in all these parameters. That's why I wanted to stress this. You need a basic of uh, medical skills, like you have to do the assessment by doing a physical examination and uh, 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 doing the assessment of pulse, respiratory rate, so on, so that you could follow up the patient and see the result before and after your therapy. It could be immediately or after a long time. And assessment using various equipments like pulmonary functions, recording the blood pressure, heart rate variability, neuroimaging it is also done for us to um, do an evidence-based research and for us to document. So vital signs are recorded and various, you need to be qualified or empowered to do assessment with various equipments. As Dr. Madangi said, Neuroimaging, um, fMRI, EEG studies uh, uh, all show that music therapy intervention has very remarkable effect. So a music therapist for research and documentation needs to be qualified in doing that if you want to do high impact research. And also heart rate variability is one such parameter. So with this uh, background, we would like to share a few of our um, experiences uh, done here in the School of Music Therapy. Um, I would like to share them in three different headings. One is our music therapy process, which we do for students. Next is our projects, which we do in the hospital. Next is in the community or the clinical settings. For students, we, had a, we have a copyrighted a music therapy process, musically express your emotions and thoughts for success, which is exclusively done for the professional college students of Sri Balaji Vidyapith of all streams. Here, they undergo all the four music therapy methods, the receptive, recreative, improvisational, and creative music therapy. So the creative and uh, improvisational forms helps them to overcome their inhibition and express well. So this is a few glimpse of what is happening in at SBV. They take part in drum strike circle, they participate 
so that uh, they overcome their fear and inhibition, which helps them to communicate well with their peers and others. So the feedback shows that 12% of them said that they could communicate well, 18% felt they had good self-expression, 24% felt it would improve their focus, and 44% said it relieved their stress. Um, so next to the student um, or educational setting, few of our studies were done in the clinical setting. One, we did a music therapy study for patients with uh, uh, chronic pulmonary disorder where <clears> ohm <throat> chanting was done for uh, 20 minutes for 21 days and we could record improvement in their pulmonary functions. There was decrease in uh, the visual dyspnea scale and improvement in their stress scale. So in pulmonary rehabilitation, um, chanting had improved. Next we had, this is a very uh, prestigious project of us. A study was done during endoscopy where the participants listened to their preferred music in this uh, area, they all preferred Tamar songs, you know, and uh, mostly the women said we liked the Mariamman songs and so on. So we got the cooperation scale from the staff nurse, the state anxiety thread, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rate, which was compared with the control group, which showed very good response. So even though it is done during endoscopy, you can replicate it during other procedures. So next is during procedural support, we had done a study and music medicine or listening to pre-recorded music for a group of pre-hypertensives showed significant improvement. And there was a benefit in the heart rate variability in doctors who were stressed. And that was also uh, proved by a predominance of vagal rhythm in the heart rate variability. Now we have few uh, notable research projects from our center. As I told you, uh, Mrs. Bhuneshwari Ramesh has done in the obstetric and gynecology setting in establishing lactation and maternal breastfeeding satisfaction. The other one is culture-based chance during labor pain um, in, uh, in um, the patients undergoing uh, delivery here in our center. Yes, there was a study done for patients waiting in the ICU area where live music therapy was given. In the pediatric ward, the active focus of attention and behavior of children during immunization was studied. Yes. So few glimpses of our activity. So music therapy for rehabilitation in patients undergoing dialysis and patients in the palliative care. And this is for the antenatal women. Yes, so music therapy during community setting for transgenders is um, shown here. Yes. Um, the other slides are supportive uh, evidences from the PubMed and Cochrane review. I think I will uh, just hold this because we have an entire session on the research updates of music therapy. So there are a lot of meta-analysis reviews and systematic reviews on music therapy. Now with this, when we look at the limitation of music therapy, uh, we do a lot of study on short-term benefits, on immediate uh, results, whereas quality research on long-term benefits are not done. So we need to look at this. We need to do a lot of interdisciplinary integration. We need to cross the cultural barrier. And uh, there are a lot of studies in the Western setup we need to do this in the Asian or the Indian context with standardization, which is which will reach the entire population. So we have to overcome this in order to make uh, the world uh, realize the benefits or uh, the value of our research. 
So with this, uh, yes. So all these things were told with Dr. Madangi. So with this, uh, with uh, thanks to our visionaries, Professor K. R. Setura Mansar, uh, Professor Ananta Krishnan, and our dear director, uh, Dr. Ananda Balayogi, and with a big thanks to my uh, team at ISCM. Um, this is Dr. Shobhana here, and I finish my talk with this. If there are any queries to me, or more so to Dr. Madangi, we will. Um, we are here to answer. Thank you. for the wonderful presentation. The floor is open for discussions. Please unmute yourselves and ask questions. I would like to um, thank uh, Dr. Shobana and Dr. Matangi for both of your presentations that have been really useful and uh, very inspiring. Thank you both for the work you do and carry on. Uh, it's uh, truly inspiring. Um, for the first um, presentation, Dr. Matangi, thank you for um, bringing to the forefront all of the different areas of the brain that are stimulated by music, by music making, by listening to music. It was very useful. And also the slide with the piano and seeing all the different aspects of music making with, with that. Um, sometimes we hear a lot of these um, concepts, but to see them very well presented in a, in a slide is very, very helpful. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, Dr. Shobana, thank you also so much for illustrating the work you have been doing for this call of action that you brought on how to move forward and what is needed still. Uh, for both of you, I have um, a comment, a question that comes from my great passion for the field of uh, yoga, of course, the, the, the science and art of yoga, particularly the studies of Nad Yoga uh, that I am studying here at Ananda Ashram with um, our esteemed Dr. Nanda Balayogi Bhavanani and uh, Devasena, Miss Yogacharini Devasena Bhavanani here. So it seems to me that um, just like in Hatha Yoga, we uh, exert the body and become more aware of the body, of the prana, of the energy, and our mind uh, by putting the body in a different, in a variety of different postures, asana and pranayams. So it is with music that we want to stimulate our musical capacities by learning how to sing or listening to music or, or listening to a friend play music and bringing music to our families and patients. But ultimately the goal for or healing and quietude and ease that can be achieved after we play music. There's something so special about the peace uh, or the quiet that the mind has and the body has and all of the emotions and all of the movement of the body that can be had after the stimulation of music. So I wanted to ask you both uh, differently, of course, uh, first one and then the other. What is your experience with that? What is your experience of witnessing the release of emotion or witnessing the capacity for people to move or smile or um, even engage in an emotional reaction for people, for example, who don't generally do that or are unable to do that? Um, what is your experience with that state of calm, that state of quiet, that state of Sukham, we would say in yoga, that is offered by music, uh, where the mind is um, finally able to rest, because so much stress is coming from an agitated mind. So um, I, I don't know if I'm making myself clear with the question, because there's a lot in the question itself. Um, if I'm not clear, I can reformulate it again. <laughs> Yeah, you're uh, clear. So from my side, um, I would uh, like to share about my experiences with the students because um, immediately after they finish their group session with us, they will say, when, when are we supposed to come next here? We'll say, okay, this is only once for you. They'll say, no, we want to come again. No. And those who were silent, those who didn't open at all will say, 
will start singing, will start doing, and they will want to come again. So that is how they start expressing. So Dr. Madangi, would you like yeah, to? Yeah, yes. Um, I'm not going with music. I wish to go with the mind-body techniques. Um, we do have an elective. I'm just giving you a, a recent experience from us. We had one on mind-body wellness as an elective for the undergrad medical students because as, in, as per NMC norms, we'll have to give. But when we gave that, you'll be surprised. Each of the technique when we were giving, it connected with each of the student differently. Like for example, I'm going to give a guided meditation session. Some student come and to, come and came and told us like, it was amazing. I give a progressive muscle relaxation. Some tell us like, ma'am, can I have a recording of it? And I gave it, slept really well. For somebody I gave expressive writing, she could not write even a word. She started to cry, but I told her, please make an effort to write. First day she wrote, she said, I cried. I said, take a break and write it whenever you think. By the end of the program, she gave such a big chocolate telling like, I felt like this entire internship was just for me. I'm smiling a lot. One year I have not smiled. So you just don't know what works for any person. It's a, it's a very, really, really very subjective. Each one needs something. We give everything like an a la carte. They experience everything and finally they practice something which works for them. I think we need to not force any of these things which, we, which is more of a subjective feeling. Leave it to them. They will select which one works. Let us give them the experience. Each one takes their experience and probably the brain change will probably be the same but the intervention is different. I'm just thinking it like that, ma'am, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, thank you both very, very much. Thanks for your generous compliments too. <laughs> Always, ma'am. <laughs> um, um, Dr. Shobana, I actually have to leave now. Uh, kindly permit me to log out. And yes. thanks to everybody for making me a part of this. Yes, uh, thanks. thanks a lot, uh, madam. And uh, we positively look forward for more association with you and your center in future. Definitely, we are waiting for that. Thank you. Yes. So if there are no questions, I think we have reached the uh, end and uh, we shall close the session. Uh, over to uh, Ms. Janita. Thank you, one and all. Uh, so if in case there are any other questions, as I've told before, you can please post it in the WhatsApp group, which will be answered as soon as possible. And uh, please, do, please don't forget to join us in the next session. We'll be sending you email as well as WhatsApp reminders for the same. And uh, thank you all for joining. We'll see you in the next thank session. You. Thank you.